Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Here I am recapping today's lesson on how to trace your tessellation. I did have you create those three puzzle pieces just so that you can choose the puzzle piece that you like the best and choose the tessellation that is the best for you. Now, here's my translation piece. I have my spare piece of paper. I always recommend that you start off in the corner. It gives you a nice place to start off from, especially with the straight sides of your little square. And then you're going to trace around your tessellation piece. Now with translation, out of all of them, it is the easiest one because you're just going to fit each piece into each other and then trace around as you go along. Even when you go to the next row, Try and fit them together as best as you can. Now, I'm saying as best as you can because sometimes they don't quite fit super perfect. And that's okay. We're just going to make it look like they fit super perfect. See, like right here, my little heart is a little bit lower. That's all right. I'm just going to trace it so that it fills it up. And you're even going to trace your pieces, even if your piece hangs off a little bit on the top of the sides. All right. So, yep, my triangle up here is hanging off. I am going to trace my piece. I'm even going to trace the little parts of it that hang off on this side. And I'm going to continue across until I finished filling up my paper. Now, for those of you who like to be a little more creative sometimes like I do, what sometimes I do instead of going exactly straight across is I tilt my puzzle piece, still starting off in the corner. I have a nice frame of reference to work with and same ideas, fit them together and then go ahead and trace around the outside. So that was translation. Translation out of all of them is the easiest one to do. Translation glide is a little more tricky because oh, my puzzle piece that I was using actually fell in the corner. Excuse me while I drop everything not making the most stunning video productions here, but what are you going to do? All righty. So here is my piece for translation glide. Same as before, I'm going to use the corner of my paper to start with, and I'm going to go ahead and trace around it. Actually, this is the one. There we go. That's the right piece. Got a couple of them floating around here on my counter. All right. So when you do translation glide, after you're done tracing that first piece, you're going to notice that when you try and fit that next piece in, well, it doesn't quite match up. But what I have to do is flip it over so it matches up perfectly. All right. I'll do it again. So same here. When I go to this next one, the smaller piece is on the bottom. So I have to flip over my tessellation piece so that it locks together. Once again, remember, should be not any gaps and should not be any overlapping. So we want to try and get those tessellation puzzle pieces to fit together as best as you possibly can, kind of like a little puzzle, and you're going to go ahead and trace. And then when I get up to the next row, same thing. I got to figure out, well, which is the best way for this to fit? I might have to flip it over or rotate it. And then you go ahead and trace around the outside. Now you're filling your, again, you're going to fill up that entire piece of paper. And yes, you are still tracing it even if your puzzle piece hangs off the side a little bit. So right here, even though my puzzle piece doesn't entirely fit, I'm still going to trace the little bits that would still show. All right, so that's translation glide makes for a bit of an interesting tessellation if I might so say myself and then the last one is rotation now rotation is one of the trickier ones so same idea as before you put your puzzle piece down you trace it but then you have to kind of flip your puzzle piece around to try and see where each piece fits into there's my triangle there, so I have to flip it this way. All right. There's my heart-shaped piece. Oh, it's not quite working out. So I would flip it this way. 
so that I would not trace onto the other piece. I mean, I suppose you could if you liked how that design worked out. Alrighty. And again, flipping around, trying to figure out how each piece interacts and fits with each other. And again, still, if you've got parts of your paper that hang off, you're still going to trace it. So rotation, also a very easy way to do it, but it's a little more tricky because you really have to think about how you're interlocking your pieces together. So that's how you would trace your tessellation. Don't forget to show me your progress shots on our Google slide in our Google Classroom assignment. And I hope this helps those of you that um, I went a little too fast for. So have a wonderful day.